Good afternoon. We're going to start our secondary BSI group exercise. It is an endo and GIT case study. And it is, there has three parts, the same patient, and you can use any of the information from any of the parts to answer the questions. So what will happen initially, um, before, oh, let me just back up for a second. Um, you should have your group handouts, groups, group study materials. You should have uh, three HAI checklists. You should have the t table B1, um, secondary BSI table. And for those that are participating via web stream, all of those materials are available on the NHSN training that you have been pulling your information from previously. So for the first part, I'm gonna give you about eight minutes to work through the initial part of the case study. And then we'll have about two minutes to do the rationale and then I need a brave soul to come up and answer four of the questions. If no one volunteers, we will volunteer, we will voluntold someone. Okay, so let's get started. So here's part one of the case study. On 3-1, this is Mr. Oliver Pope. On 3-1, this 55-year-old male is admitted with chills and fatigue. He has a past medical history of IV drug use, diabetes, and diverticulitis. He has a pick place due to poor venous access. The blood cultures on admission are positive for MRSA times four and VANC is started. On 3-2, he has a TEE that reveals echo density with a tricuspid valve consistent with vegetation. On 3-4, he has blood cultures collected again and they are positive for MRSA times two. On 3-9, he feels better and he wants to go home. So the four questions that I want you to, to answer is what determination should be made in this case? And you have your four options here and you also have them in your handouts. What elements were used to make this determination? What about the three, four MRSA blood cultures? and what scenario of secondary BSI attribution was applied in this case. And so I'm gonna walk around to see if you have any questions or if you need any assistance. Oh, and I'm sorry, there's one more question. If this patient has subsequent MRSA blood cultures, I can add them to this endo SBAP. And you may begin. Okay, um, I ran a little bit over time. Do we have a brave soul who wants to provide the answers to part one? Anyone? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's give her a hand. She's a brave soul. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what determination should be made in this case? B. Oh, I'm sorry, C. C, C, C. Absolutely right. Endo, endo four with a secondary BSI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, here's quickly why. Um, so a POA endo four was cited on three one. We had MRSA blood cultures times four, and that created an IWP of uh, 227 to 311. The 32 TEE is captured in that IWP. 
Um, and so the POA endo RIT is 3-1 until the end of the admission, and the SVAP is 227 to the end of the current admission, okay? All right, so what about the 3-4 blood cultures? B. Absolutely, it would be secondary to the POA endo hole. And here's why. Because of the result, the lengthy SVAP that's associated with endo is only limited to the organisms identified in the blood specimen that match the organisms used to meet endo. So excellent. And that's in chapter 17, page 17-12. Uh, so what scenario was applied in this case? Two. B. Scenario two. And again, because the blood was used as an element and that the blood was collected during the IWP, it is deemed secondary using scenario two. Last question. If this patient has subsequent MRSA blood cultures, I can add them to the endo SVAP. True. Absolutely. Very good. Good job. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna have to breeze through these very quickly. So I'm gonna ask that you do both part two and part three at the same time. So I'm gonna read part two, but you're gonna have to read part three on your own. And I want you all to just um, make a determination. So 310, despite Mr. Pope wanting to go home, he's still admitted. 312, you have blood cultures collected that are positive for Klebsiella pneumoniae. On 314, he has left lower quadrant abdominal pain. That's uh, 7 out of 10. He has a 103 degrees Fahrenheit uh, temperature and, a di and diarrhea. On 315, he has a CT scan that indicates loculated fluid collection in the bowel consistent with abscess. So your three questions are what determination should be made in this case, what elements were used to make this determination and what scenario was applied in this case. And I'm gonna ask you to work on both part two and three um, because I'm, I'm running pretty low on time, okay? And I'm gonna be walking around, so if you need any assistance, just please um, pull me or one of the BSI experts. Okay, everyone, do we have a brave soul who wishes to share the answers for part two? Oh, thank you, everyone give her a hand. <laughs> So what determination should be made in this case? Okay. Actually, it's 312 GIT 2C with the secondary um, BSI. And here's why. Because I think I, I, I figured out why you, you decided to choose IAB. But because the loculated fluid collection was in the bowel wall, it was confined in the gastrointestinal tract. Um, we would use GIT instead of IAB, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so um, an HAI GIT 2C is cited on 312, and then um, the Klebsiella pneumonia creates a GIT uh, IWP of 3.9 to 3.15. The fever and abdominal pain on 3.14, and the, the CT that's eligible for, um, that's suggestive of infection, is captured in the IWP. The GIT RIT is 3.12 to 3.25, and the GIT SBAP is 3.9 to 3.25. So what scenario was applied in this case? I'm sorry, scenario two. That's correct. So... Um, now we have to move on to part three. Do we have a brave soul that wishes to share the questions for um, part three? I think I'll be more. 
Does anyone want to volunteer for part three? Okay. All right, well, let's just go over them together. How's that? Okay. So what determination should be made in this case? D, both B and C, okay? So remember that the GIT-2C was initially met on 312, but during the GIT-2C um, RIT, which is 312 to 325, GIT-2C can be met again. And what I also noticed as I was going through this group exercise that it is also possible to use some of the elements from the previous GIT to deem a blood culture secondary. Did everyone catch that? Okay. All right. So I have here to try to make it a little bit cleaner that the GIT 2C was met on 317 and you have the, the blood culture, the abdominal pain and fever, along with the imaging and the 317 Canada. And then also a GIT2A is met. So they had fever and abdominal pain, the IR drainage that was positive for Canada albicans. And so the blood culture, the 317 Canada, is actually secondary to both the GIT2C and the GIT2A. Okay? In addition, endo 6 is also met on 317 during the RIT of the POA endo. So we had fever. We had the 317 Canada Albicans blood culture. On 320, we had the echo density with tricuspid valve that's still present and consistent with vegetation. And we also had the IV drug history. We chose Endo 6 because it does not have any restrictions or limitations as far as the type of organism that you would use. Whereas with Endo 4 and 5, you will have to use the typical Endo infectious organisms. So what scenario would be applied in this case? Both, so it would be C. So we use scenario one to apply GIT 2A with a secondary BSI, and then we use scenario two to apply GIT 2C with a secondary BSI, and also an endo six with a secondary BSI. If the 317 blood cultures were positive with only Pseudomonas, would your determination remain the same and why? So actually that's, um, I'm sorry, that's an error. It actually would be no. And the reason why would be that you could not meet GIT2A because the Pseudomonas blood culture does not match the candida. Okay. Additionally, GIT2C cannot be met with the Pseudomonas blood culture because Pseudomonas is not an MBI organism. However, Endo 6, that determination would remain the same. And I am done with my presentation. Thank you so much.